Hello there, my name is Yorkie and welcome to the channel for episode 13 of the in-depth track guide series for Assetto Corsa Competizione. Just before we get into the video that's going to give you all the juicy details in order to improve your lap times around this track, I just wanted to say if you're new to the channel and enjoying this in-depth track guide series then please consider subscribing to the channel, it will be very much appreciated and if you want to follow me on other social media pages my links are down in the description below. So getting back to this 13th episode for the series, we are going to be taking a look at Bathurst Mount Panorama in Australia. The track's length is 3.8 miles which equates to 6.21 kilometers, has a total of 23 corners and will require a setup that will utilize medium downforce and medium suspension stiffness. And then finally the key action areas to take note of for your overtaking opportunities are going to be turn 1, turn 2, Turn 18, 20, 21 and 23. Notice that rather large gap there in the middle with an awful lot of corners missing. That is because pretty much as soon as you get onto the mountain section of this track, there is going to be no opportunity for overtaking pretty much whatsoever. So getting into the meat and bones of the episode, we're going to start off with the pit lane entry which is just before the final corner on the left hand side of the track. You will have to slow down to navigate the chicane that's there, then you can accelerate a little bit before slowing down once again before the pit speed limiter line which is going to be situated just here after the pit wall starts on the right hand side of the track and before you get to the liquid molly bridge that spans the width of the circuit there as well. When it comes to the pit exit, the pit limiter disengage line is just before you get to the left hander that leads through the inside of turn one and back out onto the circuit. You can reference the catch fencing that's there on the right hand side just as an indicator as to where the line is going to be situated. But disengage the limiter at this point and accelerate through this turn pretty much flat out before merging back out onto the left hand side of the circuit. Moving on to the actual track itself, this is going to be our breaking point for the first corner. It's going to be roughly about 75, 80 odd meters before the turn. We're going to be braking fairly hard from the right hand side of the track, shifting down into second gear and aiming to clip the apex at this point here. The corner does feature quite a bit of camber and also a slight dip as you go through the turn as well so use that to your advantage to help you hook in closer towards the inside apex and that inside curb. You want to be getting as close to the curb as you possibly can without actually touching it in either the dry or wet conditions as doing so will bounce the car out wide and compromise your exit. So if you get a good run through the apex of the corner we're obviously going to come out to the exit where we're going to track out wide and make full use of this smooth slope curb on the outside here. There's a little bit of painted tarmac just beyond that so use it in the dry conditions to your full advantage but because this is a key traction zone heading up towards Mountain Strait you will want to avoid running this curb in those wet and rainy conditions. So after Mountain Straight we're going to be positioning the car to the left hand side ready for turn 2 Griffin's Bend. This is going to be our braking point here roughly again about 80 odd meters before the corner referencing the slip road that's there on the left hand side of the track. We're going to be braking hard and turning in fairly early to hook up our apex on the inside here of this second corner. It is quite long, it's got quite a bit of camber to it, it's moderate to high amount but because the corner is turning uphill and to the right there's quite a bit of compression coming through the mid corner which allows you to hook in quite nicely. Again avoid the inside curbing here in both the dry and wet conditions but do try and get as close as you possibly can to it in order to have the best run through the turn. And then when we come off the corner we want to be picking up the throttle relatively early and making use of that compression, making full use of the smooth slope curb and the unpainted tarmac that features beyond it but obviously keeping out of the wall. We want to be doing this in the dry conditions, in the wet conditions you'll probably be wanting to avoid this curb pretty much entirely. As we now begin the mountain section this is where a lot of our overtaking opportunities disappear and we come into turn three. There's nothing too major to note about this corner other than the positioning of trying to get the car as close to the inside wall as you possibly can ready for the braking zone of turn four which we're going to transition into pretty much immediately. This is going to be the braking zone here you want to try and let the car drift out a little bit wide but not too far out onto the marbles out there. Shift down through the gears down into first or second depending on your car's gearing and then aiming to hook up to the inside wall getting as close to it as you possibly can and aiming to apex the corner at this point here. 
As you can see, there is no curb on the inside here, so just try and get as close to that inside wall as you possibly can. And two other things that you can take note of is the fact that there's an extremely high amount of camber in this corner and you are also running uphill. So those two things combined will allow you to carry a little bit more speed in this turn than you would initially anticipate. When coming out through the exit, again, there is no exit curve to worry about here. There is literally just a wall on the outside. You want to try and maximize the track width here, so try and get as close to that wall as you possibly can without actually scraping it. And then we're going to keep the car to the right-hand side of the track, maybe drift slightly towards the middle before then coming into turn five. There is a slight bump at the entry to this corner on the inside, so do be careful of that in the wet conditions, but you want to try and get as close to that inside wall as we possibly can, making use of the curb in the dry conditions be careful with it in the wet we're going to track the car out wide as we take the corner completely flat out and then we're going to be on the left hand side of the circuit as we come into turn six is literally just a very slight breathe of the throttle as we glide the car in through our apex here you shouldn't need to be braking for quarry corner here there is a slight bit of camber and it also does actually increase in slope as we go into and through the turn so that's going to help you hook in as well but the key is to stay off the inside curb in both the dry and wet conditions as clipping that will bounce the car and likely send it into the outside wall on the exit. You want to try and get as close to this wall as you possibly can without actually scraping it. There is a slight bit of curb on the outside here as well which may help you stay out of it. You want to make use of this exit curb in the dry conditions. You probably want to be avoiding it if not do take extreme caution with running this curb in the wet conditions to avoid any potential traction loss. We then come through turn 7 and into turn 8, otherwise known as Reed Park, and there's not really anything to note here, there's no curbs or anything. All you need to do is just position your car in the centre of the track as we come through this turn. This will set you up very nicely for the entry for turn 9, Fog Hollow. This is going to be the point that you're going to just slightly lift off the accelerator and float the car into the corner. You don't actually need to brake for this turn in the dry conditions, although you may need to do so for the wet. The compression here is going to help you turn in and aim to hook up your apex just here just off the inside curb there is a moderate to high amount of camber in this corner which will help you get through the turn try and maximize the downforce as you carry the speed through and stay off that inside curb in both the dry and wet conditions touching that will bounce the car out wide into the outside wall here on the exit which is going to be absolutely crucial to stay out of this is one of those highly dangerous areas where you are likely going to see an accident or a crash you want to make use of of that smooth slope exit curb in the dry conditions however you want to take extreme caution with running that in the wet. We're then going to come up over a blind crest and transition into turn 10. Just as we get to the top of that crest is going to be the point where we're going to lift off the accelerator and commit to the corner. You don't actually need to brake for this turn in the dry conditions, although you may need to do so in the wet. But as we come down the other side and start to compress on the other side of that crest, we're going to turn the car in and aim to hook up our apex just off the inside curb here for McPhillamy Park. Just like the previous turn, you want to lean on the downforce, ideally staying off the inside curb in both the dry and wet conditions, although you can get away with touching it sometimes in those dry conditions. We're then very rapidly going to come out to the exit where there's a smooth slope curb on the outside here with grass and gravel just beyond it. You can use this in the dry conditions. You do want to take extreme caution with it in the wet, however. This curb is quite steep, so it will help you keep on the track if you do need to use it and you're starting to track out a little bit wide as you come out through the exit here. We're then going to bring the car to the left-hand side of the track ready for Skyline. There's going to be two parts to the braking zone. One just before you get to the crest itself and then the second just after as you kind of straight line turn 11 as you can see indicated here. Do not be holding the brakes as you go over the crest as that will likely lock them up and spin you off into the walls on either side of the track. We're then going to be into the apex of turn 12. This is going to be our apex point just here on the inside curb otherwise known as the S as you should be in third gear about this point. The corner's got moderate to high camber and you're going to be doing a little bit of a dance with the car coming through this section. You want to try and straight line it as much as possible and be dancing on the brake and throttle pedal trying to carry that speed through. You can use this inside curb in both the dry and wet conditions so that's going to help you straight line the corner a little bit more but immediately coming off of turn 12 we're then into the braking zone for turn 13. This is going to be our braking point here. Again I said you'll be dancing on the 
pedals. This is going to be a quite a key breaking point, slowing the car down. You want to try and hook in and hug this inside wall pretty much all the way through the corner. You may need to do a little bit of trail braking through it as well, but you should be in second gear and staying just off the inside curb in both the dry and also the wet conditions. Coming through turn 13, we're immediately going to transition into the braking zone for turn 14, otherwise known as the infamous dipper. We need to do our braking in a straight line here and get the car slowed down before we turn into the corner because the track does drop away from you as you turn in towards the apex. The car goes very light at the front. It's very easy to get an awful lot of understeer here, but this is going to be our apex point that we're looking for in this left hander right up against the inside wall. There is no curb to worry about here, so it's just a case of getting as close to that inside wall as you possibly can in either first or second gear. As we come through the compression, we're immediately going to transition into the right hander of turn 15. You should be completely flat out through this corner. There's only a very slight amount of camber and there's a smooth inverted curb here on the inside, which you can use and kind of cut in both the dry and also the wet conditions. Just stay out of that inside wall. Turn 16 is pretty much a non-existent flick left, but we then come into turn 17 where we're going to need to do a little bit of trail braking in preparation for the following corner. You're going to need to trail brake slightly coming through this turn and then as you come up over the crest and just start to drop down the other side, you'll need to come off of the brakes there before you then get back on them again for the main braking phase of turn 18 for Forest Elbow. You're going to be positioning the car over on the right hand side to try and open up this corner as much as you possibly can. As you turn into the corner you may experience some understeer as the track is trying to drop away from you. There is quite a bit of camber but in order to help hook into that apex up against the inside wall you may want to drop down from second gear down into first just to provide that extra little bit of bite. As you can see there is no curbs to worry about in this corner so it's just a case of trying to get nice and close to that inside wall but for the exit you want to get as hard on the power as soon as you possibly can for the very long run down the Conrod Strait. This is the exit of turn 18 Forest Elbow and as you can see there is no curbing out here on the outside it is literally just a case of trying to make full use of the track width getting as far right as you possibly can up against that outside wall without actually clipping it. Turn 19 is a very slight kink at the start of the straight which we don't really need to worry about but turn 20 is a bit more of a significant corner that comes at the end of the straight. You want to be positioning the car as far left out here as you possibly can to try and open up this corner to try and carry the speed through. It should be completely flat out. And then you want to keep the car on the far right hand side of the circuit ready for the braking zone for the chase. It's going to be a very hard and heavy braking zone, braking from about 130 meters before the corner in order to get the car slowed down from its top speed. We're then going to turn the car in and aim to hook up an apex just shy of the inside curb around about here. There is a moderate amount of camber in this corner but there is also a slight blind rise as you go through the turn. You want to be staying off the inside curb however in both the dry and wet conditions. Coming out through the exit of turn 21 we're immediately going to transition into the right hander of turn 22. This is where we're going to be apex in the corner. It should be completely flat out through here in the dry conditions. You'll probably want to be balancing the throttle through here in the wet conditions. Stay off that inside curb if you possibly can. You may need to use it when you come tracking out wide pretty much straight out the exit of turn 21 but coming through the main part of this right hander you want to be staying off that inside curb and then coming out through the exit we're going to let the car drift out to the left on the outside of the corner out here as always there's an exit curve on the outside here that we can make use of in the dry conditions but we'll be wanting to avoid it in those wet rainy conditions and then we're into the final corner itself. We're going to be braking just after the 100 meter board on the right hand side of the circuit. We're going to be shifting the car down into second, maybe first gear, depending on the car's gearing and turning the car into our apex, just shy of the inside curb here. There's a slight bit of camber in this final turn, but like many other corners around this circuit, you'll be wanting to avoid touching that inside curb in both the dry and also the wet conditions, mainly because it is quite a big one. If you touch it, it's going 
going to bounce the car out wide and compromise your exit. And speaking of which, the run off the final corner is a relatively straightforward one. It's just a smooth slope curb on the outside here. You can use it in the dry conditions, but as always, avoid it in the wet conditions to avoid hurting your traction coming off the corner. But just beyond that is going to be some grass and gravel as runoff. So now that we completed the breakdown, let's take a look at the lap at full racing speed. So now that we set a semi-decent lap around Bathurst Mount Panorama, I just want to finish off the episode by saying please be mindful of what your car and car setup is capable of. Some cars will be able to brake a little bit later than others, some cars will be able to take curves better than others, it's obviously going to be dependent on your car setup, it may have a slight factor as well, and then obviously the weather conditions are going to play a factor too. Obviously I've tried to highlight these things where possible, but please do take note and obviously apply accordingly to the session race or conditions that you're driving in. Other than that, thank you very much for watching the episode. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and if you want to support the channel, please consider subscribing and if you hit the bell notification, you'll be notified each time a video goes live and you won't miss out on any future content. I hope to see you back for the next one. Until then, have fun, stay safe and take care.